Welcome to the Berean Bible class of Elkview Baptist Church. Thank you for joining in on the study and thank you for the privilege of sharing God's word with you. We've been working our way through the book of Matthew and we've gone through chapter five and into chapter six now and we're finishing up chapter six and five, six, and seven are a part of the Sermon on the Mount which is uh, a really great sermon by the greatest teacher ever, Jesus. Today we're going to focus on something that Jesus spent a good bit of uh, time in terms of the words and verses on in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34, and one specific topic here. So let's read together Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34 together. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of much more, are you not of more value than they? Verse 27, which of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? That's at least from the ESV and the NIV versions. Then on to verse number 28, it says, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Then to verse 31, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will, shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So it seems pretty clear when you look at these verses what the focus of Jesus is. And I've got a slide here that summarizes some of the words of emphasis. And um, the word worry appears actually six times in these uh, 10 verses. But if you look at the little summary I have here on this particular slide, it, it starts off and says, do not worry. And then worrying about anything that has to do with uh, your lifespan. Why worry about clothing? And then two more statements there in verses 31 and 34 that say, just do not worry. So it's clear what Jesus' teaching and focus is with these verses. But let me ask you a question first. What are some of your favorite things to worry about? And I say your favorite things because there are some of us who uh, have a natural inclination and tendency to worry, and others are on the opposite end of that spectrum. But if you have money in the bank, you might worry about that. You might worry about possible health issues, the stock market crashing, paying the bills, deadlines. A lot of people worry about conflict and how to deal and address conflict with others. Uh, a lot of people right now are worrying about this pandemic called COVID-19. Some people worry about the past and what has happened in the past. Other people worry about tomorrow, like in the verses we just read, or the future. And then some people worry about, well, death and what happens at death. So what are your favorite things to worry about? as you think about the verses that Christ has shared with us. So let's look at this word worry. In the Greek, 
as used in, in several of the verses here, it's a verb and it's an imperative. And some of the ways we can understand the definition of the Greek word translated worry would be to be anxious about it, to be anxious for it, to be troubled, uh, fretting in anxiety. And then there's another way to look at this word as used in the New Testament, to care, to take thought. And I would make a note that I like the way the ESV version translates these verses. It says, do not be anxious about. So that's a good way to look at that. On the next slide, I've got a little breakout of how this word is used in the New Testament. In the Greek, the word translated worry or to be anxious is used two different ways. One I'll call a bad worry and one a good worry. And you can see the definitions that we just covered in the previous slide there about bad worry. That's the anxiety type of worry the worry that is an upsetting kind of worry versus a good worry, again, with that definition, to care and to take thought. So let's look at that one more way from the Greek word and how it's used in the New Testament. The negative way or the bad way is a oh, crippling, harmful, uh, almost numbing way to approach life. It's not what Christ wants for us. He wants us to experience joy, not a negative anxiety about things. And then the second way this Greek word is used in the New Testament, it's more positive. It's a beneficial concern about something, not an anxiety um, type of worry or anxious type of worry. So it's really important to think about that two significantly different ways the same Greek word is used in the New Testament. So the verses we looked at before, I used the word worry everywhere. So now in verses 25 through 34 there, I've replaced that on this next slide that shows the word anxious. It says, don't be anxious about, or just do not be anxious. And again, it's an imperative statement about all these things. Don't be anxious. Jesus wants what's good for us, not that feeling of anxiety and fretting about things. So let's move on and look at what Jesus is telling us about these words and in these verses, what he's teaching. Jesus is teaching us that being anxious or troubled is Needless, senseless, useless, faithless, godless, pointless, and impractical in all the verses that I've got listed there. In fact, we could dive really deep into every one of these verses and understand exactly what I mean by this, but this is a, a brief summary and outline of what Christ is telling us about his thinking on being anxious about things that we should not, having that fretting or anxiety in our life is not what he wants for us. And then he says these words in, in the, my paraphrase about them, needless, senseless, useless, faithless, godless, pointless, and impractical. That's how Jesus looks at this issue. Now, if we give in to that worrisome anxiety and fretful type of attitude toward life, and that's what motivates us, then here are some of the results on the next slide. You'll see some of the results of being anxious about things. Well, some people eat too much. Uh, in the United States of America, there are tons and tons of sleeping pills consumed by our people because they can't sleep, because they're anxious, they're nervous, they're fretting over things. And then, of course, I would observe that when we have anxiety and that anxious feeling in our mind, it affects us physically, meaning some people actually get stomach ulcers. Have you ever had that feeling that your stomach feels like it's in knots because of your anxiety or your anxiousness over something? 
Uh, there have been studies that show that people have one of their prevailing thoughts about life as fear that's caused by anxiety and the anxious feeling about things, either the past, the present, or the things we saw on the other slide. So all these things, Jesus is teaching us and saying, you don't need to go down this path. There is a much better way uh, than living through the anxiety of whatever it is. Again, it could be conflict with another person. And sometimes the, the anxiousness about the conflict is far worse than the actual resolving of the conflict. So keep that in mind. So let's think about what is Jesus teaching here. Do not be anxious does not mean don't think about tomorrow. He's just saying don't be anxious about tomorrow. It's okay to think about tomorrow, to plan for tomorrow, and to be ready for tomorrow. All those things are okay. It's that anxious part of it that Jesus is telling us, leave that out. You don't need that part to do what he wants you to do in life. <clears throat> and I always think of the, the reference to the ants in the book of Proverbs, where it's really clear that they're industrious and they're storing and they're planning and putting things away for tomorrow. And the scripture says, consider that example. So again, do not be anxious does not mean don't think or plan about tomorrow. Planning is good. So let's move on to the next slide. Do not be anxious does not mean don't work. Jesus is not against sowing and reaping. Birds actually have to gather their food even though God provides it. So in fact, in 2 Thessalonians, it says if you don't work, you don't get to eat. So Jesus is pro-work, but he's not pro-anxious work. Big difference there. One of my favorite verses on this topic is from the, the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. And let's read those together. It says, be anxious, and that is the same Greek word used back in Matthew, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then in verse 8, there's a list given to us of things to think about. And I would propose that when we think about those things that are listed there in Philippians 4, 6 through 8, the feelings of anxiety and anxiousness dissipate. And then that peace of God can come into our soul and comfort us. So let's think a little bit more about Philippians 4, 6 through 8 there. It's saying basically, don't worry, but do this. One, pray. Two, pray specifically and intensely, meaning a spiritual earnest prayer for that word supplication. And then give thanks. In everything, give thanks. And for me, that, that little phrase, giving thanks, when you're facing a problem that could cause that anxious feeling to come, giving thanks is like having a nuclear bomb in your arsenal that just blows up the feeling of anxiety. When you think about all the great things God has done for you and you give thanks to God for those things, those anxious things seem less important. So in Philippians is saying, don't worry, do this. Pray, be a spiritual prayer, prayer and pray intensely and earnestly and give thanks. So let's move on and ask the question, then we've talked about the, the bad worry. Well, what is good worry? From 2 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, 28, from the, the words recorded by the Apostle Paul, it says, besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. 
And that word translated concern here in Corinthians is that same Greek word that we read back in Matthew translated worry. The Greek word numbered 3309. So here, Paul's got a concern for all the churches. In this particular use, it's a good concern. He wants the best for the churches. He wants to do things that help bring about good things for the churches. So here's one example of a good worry. Let's move on to a second one. From Philippians chapter 2, verse 20, and this one's from the NIV. It says, I have no one else like him, meaning Timothy here, who will show genuine concern for your welfare. That same Greek word translated worry or to be anxious in Matthew is translated concern here. And here you can see that it's a, a good concern, a genuine concern about the welfare of those in Philippi. So again, here's a second example of a, a good worry. It's not a worry that really is an anxious worry. It's that second definition we looked at, to care, to be concerned about. So then when we think about these battles that sometimes we have with worry, let's think about turning them into opportunities. Meaning when we're faced with that feeling of anxiousness or anxiety, we ought to be turning our attention to God. We ought to be trusting Him, not ourselves. We need to talk to Him because we know He really cares about us. And then we can cast our burdens on the Lord and give them over to Him and let Him care for us through them. So let's turn worry into opportunity. And then uh, I'll wrap up with a reference here to Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30. Let's read these verses together. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we want to take our anxious burdens and give them to Jesus and take his burdens that he wants us to carry. And that gives us a feeling of peace. So as we conclude, thinking again broadly about the Sermon on the Mount and all the things that we've talked about, it's very clear that our motives matter. It's very clear that our attitudes matter, specifically here with the verses that we've covered. We don't want to have an attitude that is one of being anxious or being fretful or being full of anxiety. It's okay to have an attitude that says, I care and I'm concerned. That's the good type of worry. So we know that all these things matter. And as we think again broadly about the Sermon on the Mount and the, the teachings that Jesus has given us, we should want to live a beatitude life. We should want to be salt and light in the community and folks around us so that we can lead them in an example that Christ wants them to see. And then from the verses we just looked at, Christ really wants us to trust him, not be anxious about life. So with all that said, let's pause for a word of prayer. And again, thank you for joining in on the study. Lord, thank you for your teaching. Thank you, Lord, that you meet us where we need to be met with the daily concerns that come up with feelings of worry, anxiety, and anxiousness. Lord, help us trust in you, help us serve you, help us have joy in what you have for us. In Christ's name we pray, and amen.